there. So the other business owners in my community, they started asking me the questions on how they, they can uh, order the shipment from the overseas or uh, how, how can they negotiate the price and how they should quote the price for the international trade. So they started asking me a bunch of the questions related to the export. And uh, because I had that experience, I started to answer them. Uh, but I always felt that I didn't really have enough uh, background, so I went to study Master's in International Business. Uh, and shortly after that, uh, I moved to Canada. And when I came, I started, like it's probably most of you, uh, who, especially who are immigrants, start going out to the networking events and uh, some kind of conventions where you introduce yourself and you try to figure out uh, what you're going to do here in the same country. Uh, so, uh, and in those uh, networking events and conventions, uh, I talked to people about my experience and what I was doing, uh, how I was you know, teaching the business owners and just uh, how to do the export import trade. And, I, surprisingly, I found that uh, people in Canada were asking the same questions as people in Russia. And then I realized, that, okay, if people in Russia and people in Canada ask the same ask the same questions, then there prob there's probably a universal problem. And the universal problem is that uh, when you wanted to get into export or import trade, you don't really have a blueprint. You don't really have a like, maybe like step by step plan how to start your business or if you have the business for example you produce something or you manufacture something uh, you don't have a plan how to say find new export markets or how to find the suppliers of raw materials or parts overseas and so then <clears throat> i got that aha moment and uh, this is eventually how uh, we global was set up with the purpose to help local businesses become global uh, so we provide uh, the framework for the companies, entrepreneurs, uh, how to get into export import. Specialized in physical products. Uh, some of you probably are uh, thinking of exporting importing services. I mean, this is something that we can also uh, help you out, but uh, our key uh, focus is on trading, trading in goods, physical goods. Uh, and with that being said, uh, can anybody uh, can you raise your hand who is currently doing export import just to get a sense of the audience? Okay, okay, good. And who is thinking about export import? And what everybody? Okay, and those. What are your answers then? Actually. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Yeah, just, uh, just just to get a feeling of uh, for the audience. So uh, our topic today is um, first steps in international trade. And over the years, we identified four okay, steps. We got one more that's just arriving. And those four, and those four steps are something that we're gonna uh, that, that we're gonna go through today. Uh, and I'm doing the workshops uh, on a regular basis. My workshop, uh, workshops are always practical. So uh, in the end of this workshop, I want you to uh, go away with at least of the least of your export markets or source markets where you will import from and uh, your uh, desk you have uh, the worksheets and we'll go through the worksheets later on when the, when the right time comes but uh, let's start uh, with the first step in international trade and this is actually uh, figuring out your value proposition and before we jump into it, any questions Okay. Okay. So then, uh, let's <clears throat> jump right into the topic. So the first uh, step is figuring out your value proposition. Um, it's a good idea, even if you have a domestic business, to figure it out. But especially if you um, either are exporting or importing or uh, working on an international um, environment uh, where you are competing with foreign companies and maybe multinational companies, it's always very good to know uh, what is your key advantage. And if that advantage is price, maybe your product is the cheapest one, that's fine. Uh, but what I want you to think, uh, to, to do, I want you to think outside the box and outside just price. Because your advantage, your key value proposition may be in the fact that you can deliver the products faster than everyone else in the industry. Especially if you're dealing with uh, food products, this may be critical for you. Another 
area you should look at is the guarantee. Uh, maybe you can uh, provide 12 month guarantee versus six month guarantee if you're competitor. So basically my point is that you've got to understand that key value proposition, key differentiator uh, that you will be focusing on when you will be selling and marketing your product outside the country. And uh, can anyone uh, give the example of their value propositions and their products from the audience? Yeah, don't be shy, please. I want to hear your examples. Quality maybe your differentiator as well. Yeah? I didn't hear the question. Sorry. Uh, the, the question is basically to give the examples of um, uh, your unique selling proposition, okay. how you differentiate yourself from everybody else in the industry. Uh, essentially, uh, why would somebody buy your product versus a similar product made by somebody else or uh, offered by somebody else? Quality, uh, after sales service. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe customer service, mm -hmm. I guess. And uh, can you illustrate that? Uh, what, do you mean on, uh, what do you mean by customer service and after sales service? Uh, for example, like two companies are after the same product, mm -hmm. and uh, you uh, make sure that this client, whenever you receive the product, anything happens during mm -hmm. the, the journey to the delivery or after he gets the product, he gets faster. Uh, uh, response or he gets a uh, brand new product if he gets damaged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe the other is not offering that. Thing. And do you deal with a particular product? Just, just for no. Okay. I'm just generous. Okay. Right. Well, so is this. Uh, oh, yeah. Trade financing. If you can offset some of the customers' uh, financial purchases, you probably have a, a better position to sell more to them. Yeah, uh, overall I would say it's better terms if you offer better terms uh, to your customer. Yeah, for sure. Say you're willing to, for example, if you're a seller, <coughs> for example, you're willing to wait 90 days for your payment versus 30 days. I don't suggest that, but it's just not that. Uh, general would be better quality and price in the better terms. Uh, it, 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 there's no real answer to that question. It's maybe a combination of different factors. Uh, it all depends on your product and your target market. What, what your customers value the most? Right. Any more questions, comments on that? Okay. Uh, if no questions, then we'll um, we should do the next step. And. Uh, the next step uh, in building your international trade business is better understanding your customer and profiling your customer so that you knew exactly who is your target, who's your ideal target buyer. And you may be selling to other businesses, in such cases it's business to business kind of profile, for example industry, number of employees, location, uh, the volume that they're buying. Uh, if you're selling directly to the consumers, like you and I, then you should know the demographics. Basically their uh, age, uh, location, uh, financial status, marital status, and so forth. Now, the reason why you need that is because um, I don't think any of you uh, represent a large multinational company with unlimited marketing budget. Anyone? Like Coca-Cola and so forth, no? Okay. So, because you uh, guys are uh, small to medium-sized uh, uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, and the employees of small to medium-sized uh, companies, you have very limited marketing budget. And you cannot market to everyone, like, for example, Coke does, or all of those large multinationals do. Uh, their advertising is more like a brand advertising, and uh, they advertise to everyone, to all the demographics. Right? For uh, you guys, you have to select the narrow demographics, your narrow target demographics, and spend your marketing budget wisely targeting that demographic specifically. Because uh, if you're, for example, your target clients are, uh, let's say, women living in uh, Greater Toronto area between 25 and 35 years old, uh, there's no point for you to say waste your advertising 
money, marketing money, uh, advertising to, uh, for example, uh, seniors or meals or whatever, or to the kids, for example. Does that make sense to you? Anyone can give an example of uh, your target, your ideal target customer? It's supposed to be interactive session. <laughs> <laughs> example but I have a kind of question. Um, sure. Recently we have been trying to uh, find out the data for, uh, for the thing goes from Canada to, like from, from a port of Canada to other countries mm -hmm. and we have find really hard to get that data. Mm -hmm. So so your so your question was like should do uh, to uh, about the target market. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the things I find it a little difficult. We'll get to that. Okay, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, if, uh, if by that time you don't get the answer, uh, then please raise this question again and we'll take another look. Right. Any, anyone, so anyone, can, can anyone give an example of their target customer? Yeah. For example, improvements or fashion products. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, if you especially trade fashion products, uh, you may uh, target specific, not, not just uh, all women, but for example, women of specific age. From 25 to, <laughs> I don't know, 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But for example, you don't uh, uh, target teenagers, but you no. may target teenagers, depending on your problem. So that, this is a good example of a uh, wise, and, uh, wise um, approach to the profile and ideal customer. And so, in her example, she wouldn't uh, advertise to other demographic groups that will not buy it. And uh, same, uh, there, there's the same approach in business to business market. Uh, let's say you are, uh, let's say you make uh, uh, irrigation equipment. So you are uh, appealing to uh, the specific uh, geographic areas that are dry, for example. Right? Uh, you, for example, won't sell that equipment in say, Brazil where it's rainy half a year. Uh, but you rather focus on uh, those geographic areas that uh, experience certain issues and problems. Uh, and your, your target clients are the farms, certain maybe type and certain sizes that can afford this equipment in those particular countries. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good question. Uh, when you're profiling your ideal customers, you should always uh, learn uh, what, I mean, basically, what keeps them up at night. What is their main problem that your product will resolve? So, like in the example uh, with the irrigation equipment, well, obviously it's the dry climate, lack of crops, maybe, or <coughs> lack of harvest. Sorry. Yeah. The solution to the problem. The solution yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, again, the reason the reason why you need to know the problem is uh, because you will be uh, putting all your marketing advertising effort to demonstrate that problem, to highlight that problem to the client, and offer your product as a solution to the problem. Yeah. Igor, when people ask questions, can you speak louder? Oh, sure. Because it's very hard to hear you. Okay. okay. So we ask a question. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat. I'll repeat the question. Okay, thank you. But can, can you hear me there? Yes, I can. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, can you speak louder? <clears throat> yes. I was looking to uh, try to develop a business where I would be offering a service um, in project management and offering to help um, exporters, foreign exporters, bring. Products into Canada, mm -hmm. uh, or possibly even uh, uh, foreign investment or mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of the, the demographics that I was mm -hmm. uh, trying to sift through. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, foreign investors, for example. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I think you had. The... I think uh, it's notable uh, that you should also look at your own inputs rather than just your customers. There can be uh, really good business ideas for products, services, mm -hmm. and um, 
an opportunity may exist, but a pain point might be, you know, the cost of freight. Uh, you might get a, a better price for a product, but your freight costs are going to put over. So that's a pain point as well, right? So I think it's good to be aware of pain points on both sides. Yep, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, first of all, uh, you got to make sure that you're a capital capable of either exporting or importing. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very important. Any other questions? Comments? Examples? Okay, so let's move on. Um, <clears throat> the next step is selection of the right product to either, either import or export, uh, especially if you have several different products and you have to choose uh, one or two or three of them. Typically, we don't recommend to go with more than three different products, just because uh, again, you may you're in small to medium-sized businesses, or uh, you just maybe started your business or thinking of starting your trading business. You'll have limited budget, so uh, don't go with like 20, 30 products. Uh, start slow. Uh, and a couple of recommendations: which products to select. Uh, first of all, select those products uh, with the greater margin. Because especially in international trade, you will be in the situation of negotiations, and you may be, uh, you, you may be, uh, you, you may want in that case to go down your price a little bit. So you have to allow yourself a room for negotiation. You have to allow yourself room to uh, give it discounts or trade-offs. Uh, another important product feature that you should have is adaptability. So your product can be adapted to the requirements of the export markets, especially, it's especially uh, related to the export market. So if you import the product, you can adapt that product to the requirements of your country, so Canada. Uh, then this product worth your attention and worth uh, attempting to trade with it internationally. Uh, and when we talk about product adaptation, uh, we should look not only in you know, mandatory requirements, for example, uh, if you're trading electrical products, they have to be certified uh, to meet Canadian standards, for example. But uh, we're also talking about uh, adaptation of the product to the consumer tastes. For example, uh, let's take cosmetic products. You have, uh, say, the formulation of a cream. You maybe want to alter uh, some components of it to make the product uh, more uh, appealing to the local market. Maybe they are used to you know, different you know, taste or senses. So you are changing your formula a little bit to meet the requirements of your potential customers. Even though, from the legal standpoint, you don't really have to do it. Uh, any examples of, uh, yeah? yeah? I know that, for instance, gum here, chewing gum, mm -hmm. here it doesn't taste the same as in Europe, for instance. They really they do the same brand, mm -hmm. but the taste is absolutely different. Mm -hmm. so, um, there you go. Yeah. yeah, especially with food products, it's very important. Uh, also, from outside the scope, uh, branding is another part of the product. You've got to adapt your brand. Uh, to make sure that you know the name of your brand doesn't sound odd to your foreign customers. Um, if you have I don't know some numbers, for example, in your branding, make sure that those numbers are positive, because you know, for some cultures, some numbers are you know, considered to be like a bad luck, like, like 13, for example, uh, in Western culture. So make sure that uh, uh, you give your product literature uh, and your brand name to the native speakers so that they will check if uh, you know, it sounds odd or there are some funny situations like uh, uh, like the one that happened with the Chevrolet for example. Uh, anyone speak in Spanish in the audience? So, uh, how do you translate Nova? Two words, Nova. It's not going. It's not going, yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you were a Spanish speaker, would you buy the car Chevrolet Nova? Yeah, that's exactly what happened, I believe it was like 1970s or so. Uh, Chevrolet uh, 
because you're selling the car in Chevrolet Nova, which was selling well in uh, like North America, for example, but uh, when they were uh, entering Latin America with that car, they had trouble selling it, and it took them probably half a year or a year to realize why. <laughs> so don't make the same mistake. Um, uh, unique benefits and needs, we kind of spoke about it before, but uh, uh, if you have several products to choose from, uh, choose the one that you know solves the most critical pain or the most critical issue of your customer. And also, uh, if you have uh, if you have several products to choose from, uh, choose the product that um, has the established operations. Say, if you're, for example, manufacturing the product, um, one that you know, the one with established operations because if you are trying to export a new product, you may run into sort of production issues. Uh, you may run into the delays, and you don't want that. So you want to go with uh, something that's really well established. Any questions? Uh, any examples of your products? Uh, have you been in a situation where you have to choose between, I don't know, two, three different products? Yeah. Yeah? What was that? I have a lot of natural products. So much sure you can eat them. Yeah, so then different markets, different forms of the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, here we prefer sticks, and uh, Europe they prefer all ones or sprays. Mm -hmm. Did, did you guys hear that? No. Okay, so we should talk about uh, the other one products. Um, some countries are used to sticks, some countries are used to spray, right? Yep, spray or Roll or rolls, right? Yes. So uh, she had to uh, adapt her product to the taste of her uh, target audiences in different countries by basically repackaging the same content, the same product. Correct. Thank you. So this is a good example of product adaptation. Any other examples? Yes. I remember that, uh, working with Farm here, and uh, he had a he has detergent, uh -huh. and um, so he was aiming for the African market. Mm -hmm. And I told him, well, um, you have to be careful because detergents, like you have to provide foam. Like when you it has to be foam, it has to be foamy. Like make sure your detergent or soaps are like foamy. Otherwise, people are gonna think it's Bad quality, working, yeah. but then okay. he's saying, well, here it's considered bad quality. The foam doesn't make a difference. But I'm like, we need to see foam. Oh, I see. So, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so that's, interesting. That's one of the uh, uh, how about packaging size, by the way? Um, I would imagine for Africa, it would probably be a smaller size package. Right? Smaller, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we go by French standards. Some right, of the right. countries go mm -hmm. by French standards. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. the size as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Any other examples, thoughts, questions? Okay, so then uh, we're getting to the most interactive part of uh, our session, and I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't rest until you do the exercise. Uh, okay, now, <clears throat> uh, the fourth step and the, the final step for today that we'll talk, developing your international, sorry, establishing your international business, is selection of the right market. Um, you go on the slide says selecting export markets, but you use the same approach to select both your export markets and the markets you're sourcing from. And there are certain practical tools that uh, uh, we've identified and we've developed over the years. So what I wanted to do, to do is to uh, ask you to pull uh, the worksheet from your handout. I'll give you a minute to do that. There's like... Oh, yeah. How many more you need, guys? Two, two sets? Three, 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 So this is the one I'm referring to. Uh, if you're lucky, you have power. I only have one. So 
So, uh, what you see is uh, the toolkit, um, how to identify your ideal export or import market. And the first step in the process is to go through uh, the databases. So there are two options. There is uh, Industry Camera, the Trade Data Online Database. Um, it, it works okay, but it only works for Canada. And, and the trade between Canada and other nations. But if you want to explore the trade of your product on a global scale, uh, I would recommend you to go with the United Nations Common Trade Database, uh, which consolidates trade data and trade statistics of all United Nations members, which pretty much every single country in the world. Now, uh, the reason why you need this data is because it will show you which countries are buying the product that is made in your country of origin or in the country of origin you're sourcing from. So for example, if you're selling, uh, let's say, bananas that were like, from Peru, by using this database, you can look at the list of the export markets that buy bananas from Peru. And you can replace the name of the country and you can replace the name of the product by any other product. But by accessing the United Nations Home Trade Database, you will identify the list of priority export markets or you know, the sourcing markets, where the product is coming from. Again, if you are selling, for example, 